An absolute path provides the complete path from the root of the file system to the target file or directory. When to use an absolute path? When you need to specify a file or directory that is always located in the same place, regardless of where your program or script is being run. When writing scripts or applications that require accessing system-wide resources or configurations. It is useful in contexts where the working directory might change, but the resource location needs to remain fixed. A relative path specifies the path to a file or directory in relation to the current working directory or another reference point. Does not begin with the root. Instead, it describes a path relative to the location where the script or command is executed. When to use a relative path. When working with files or directories within a project or application where the current working directory or project directory is predictable. This makes the path adaptable if the directory structure changes, but the relative positions remain the same. For scripts, programs, or commands that are executed within a project directory, making relative paths convenient for accessing project files. Absolute path always specifies the full path from the root. It is less portable if the file location changes or if the script is moved to a different environment where the root path is different. It is ideal for fixed locations or system-wide resources. Relative path specifies the path relative to the current working directory or another reference point. It is more portable within a specific project or directory structure, as long as the relative locations remain the same. It is ideal for files within a project or when the directory structure is known and consistent. At this example, we are going to demonstrate how to copy the contents of a file to another. This can be useful in various scenarios such as backing up files, duplicating configurations, or migrating data. We start by defining the paths for the source file and the destination file. The source path is where the file to be copied is located, and the destination path is where we want to save the copied file. The copy file function is designed to handle the copying process. It takes two parameters, src, the path of the source file, and dest, the path of the destination file. Once the source file is successfully opened, we read its entire content. Then close the source file to free up system resources.
we open the destination file in write mode. If the file cannot be opened, an error message is printed and the function exits. We write the content read from the source file into the destination file. After writing, we close the destination file to ensure that all data is saved properly and resources are released. Finally, we call the copy file function with the defined source and destination paths to execute the file copying process. This script effectively copies content from one file to another by reading from the source file and writing to the destination file. It handles file operations carefully, checking for errors at each step to ensure robustness. Now we will demonstrate how to manage log files by writing messages with timestamps. Logging is a crucial aspect of monitoring and debugging applications. By appending log messages to a file with timestamps, we can keep track of events, errors, and other significant occurrences over time. We start by defining the path for the log file. The log file path specifies where the log messages will be stored. The getTimestamp function returns the current date and time as a formatted string. This timestamp will be used to prep end log messages, providing context about when each message was logged. The write log function is designed to handle the logging process. It takes one parameter, message, the log message to be written to the file. We open the log file in append mode. If the file cannot be opened, an error message is printed and the function exits. 
The append mode ensures that new log messages are added to the end of the file without overwriting existing content. We write the log message to the file, prefixed with the current timestamp. After writing, we close the log file to ensure that all data is saved properly and resources are released. Finally, we call the write log function with sample log messages to demonstrate how logging works. Each call to write log appends a new message to the log file with the current timestamp. This script effectively manages log files by appending messages with timestamps. It provides a simple yet powerful way to keep track of events and monitor the behavior of applications over time. The script ensures that log messages are written safely, handling file operations and errors appropriately.